IB Pass Paper Question, May 2011, High Level Paper 2, Time Zone 1. Question 8. Define the terms acid and base according to the Bronsted Lowry theory. Distinguish between a weak base and a strong base and state one example of a weak base. Right, there are three marks there. The first part is for defining the terms acid and base according to a Bronsted Lowry theory. Well, an acid is a proton donor. Remember, the Bronsted Lowry theory deals with acids from the point of view of hydrogen ions. So we could put hydrogen ion donor. And by the same token, a base is a, is a proton hydrogen ion acceptor. Um, distinguish between a weak base and a strong base. Well, a strong base, or a weak base, first of all, a weak base is only partially dissociated in solution. This means that the weak base interacts only partially with water i.e. interacts only slightly with water molecules. Strong bases interact 100% with the water solvent producing hydroxide ions. And the third part of the question, one example of a weak base. Well, the classic example is ammonia. Ammonia solution is a weak base. And we could exemplify it by the reaction or the interaction between ammonia and the water solvent. And as we said, this, I'm just going to put the symbol in here for equilibrium to indicate that the reaction does not go to completion. 4 plus OH minus. Let's format that. So this equilibrium lies very much to the left hand side. So the majority of the ammonia does not interact with the water solvent. Okay, on to weak acids. Weak acids in the environment may cause damage. Identify a weak acid in the environment and outline one of its effects. Well, carbon dioxide is a weak acid. So what we're looking at here is carbon dioxide is a, is a possible choice for this. Another possible choice is sulphur dioxide. Sulphur dioxide exists due to pollution as does nitrogen dioxide. All of these are weakly acidic gases. Carbon dioxide effect on the environment it causes global warming or it contributes, contributes to global Warming. That would be one effect on its environment, on the environment. Sulfur dioxide contributes to acid rain. And nitrogen dioxide well, it also contributes to acid rain, but let's have something different. It contributes to to smog in pollution in cities. Because, of course, nitrogen dioxide is formed in car engines. There's three weakly acidic acids, and each of them has an effect. Obviously, for the two marks, we only have to put one weak acid and one contribution. All right, the graph below indicates pH change during the titration of 20 centimetre cubed of 0.1 molar 
ethanoic acid with 0.1 molar potassium hydroxide. From the graph identify the volume of potassium hydroxide and the pH at the equivalence point. OK, so we have to look for the equivalence point here. Let's take a, a vertical line and see where the line goes up exactly. And let's take a horizontal line and let's see if we can identify the pretty much the midpoint there. Well you can see that what we've got here is pretty close to 20 centimeters cubed and the pH is somewhere like 8.7, 8.8 at the equivalence point. Let's put these values down. So 20, 20 centimeters cubed or 20 milliliters of KOH neutralizes the acid and the pH of the equivalence point pH at equivalence point is 8.7. Explain how the graph could be used to determine the pKa of ethanoic acid and determine the pKa value for this data. Well, this is one of the interesting characteristics about these at the half equivalence point, in other words at 10, I'm just putting the line on 10 here, at 10, well the pH value is equal to the pKa of ethanoic acid. So The pH at the half equivalence point equals the pKa of ethanoic acid. Or actually explain, may maybe we should explain why this is so. Well, if you put in the Ka of the weak acid, of ethanoic acid, it's H plus, and we'll just represent the conjugate base as A minus over HA. Well, if we take logs all the way through, we would get PK negative logs equals pH times, sorry, plus log negative log so it's, so it's minus minus log a minus plus log ha well in fact rather than doing minus log a minus we'll keep a minus over ha together and we'll just say minus uh, it's the negative log minus log A minus over HA. So that's log of all of this. I should specify that. Well, you can see that when A minus equals HA, in other words the negative ion is equal to the acid, half of the acid must have been used up. So the point where half of the acid is being used up, this whole term becomes the log of zero, the log of one, which is zero. So pK equals pH. And from our graph, then, the pKa of ethanoic acid equals, well, what do we, what do we say that is? 4.8, 4.75. 4. The next thing we have to do, and I'm going to skip into here, insert the break, 
Next thing we have to do is to sketch a graph similar to the graph on the previous page to indicate the change in pH during a titration of 25 mL of strong acid with that of KOH. On your graph, clearly indicate the starting pH, the equivalence point, the pH, and the, and the final pH reached. Well, we notice we've got the 25 mL of 1.1 molar and we're titrating with 0.1 molar. So the equivalence point, because it's a strong acid and a strong base, the equivalence point in this particular case will be exactly 25 centimeter cubed. Equivalence point at 25 mil, base added. And the pH here, because it's a strong acid and a strong base, the pH will be 7. Final pH reached. pH is 7 at the equivalence point. If we keep adding base, just looking at our graph here, up to 50, we would have to calculate the pH of once we've added 50 mil. So we've got 25 mil in excess. So the moles excess of KOH will be equal to 0 0.025, that's the number of mil, times 0.1 equals 0 0.0025. That's the moles in excess base. The total volume at this point, we've added 50 to 25 of the acid. That's going to be 75 mil, which is equal to 0 0.075 dm cubed. So now we've got the concentration of the OH minus ions. So the OH minus ion concentration equals the moles, 0 0.0025, divided by 0 0.075. OK, let's bring this in then. Point. 0, 0, 0.025 divided by 0, 0.075 and this comes to 0 0.033 0 0.033 moles dm moles per litre so the POH value P, POH is the negative log of that minus log 0 0.033 and that comes to well 0 0.033 we've already got it on the calculator here let's just take the log of that it's 1.47 1.48 1 1.48 and now we know that the P H equals 14 minus POH, so that comes to 12.52. So our final pH is 12.52. This part B, describe how an indicator works. Well, an indicator indicator is a weak acid or base whose conjugate has a different colour. We can represent it by H in. It interacts with the solvent Interacts with the solvent to give H plus plus in minus. 
and each of these has a different colour. So therefore, when in, when in an excess acid, in other words, high hydrogen ion concentration, the equilibrium is pushed to the left hand side and the colour of the H in is seen. When base is in excess, the H plus ions are absorbed from the equilibrium pulling the equilibrium to to the right hand side and the colour of in minus C. Just gonna drop that down a bit so we can see this. I seem to have jumped up a little bit. We could also mention here that the midpoint of the indicator will be when there are equal amounts of both concentrations. So the, the midpoint of the indicator is seen when the H in concentration is equal to the in minus concentration. Now, if we put this fact into the weak acid, which is the indicator of course, equilibrium, we have H plus in minus over H in. We should be able to see that when H in equals in minus, then Ka equals H plus. So when H in equals, this is the in minus concentration of course, in minus concentrations, when H in concentrations in minus concentration, comma, Ka equals H plus. In other words, pKa of the pKa of the weak acid, which is the indicator, is equal to the pH. So the pH at which the indicator changes, therefore the pH at which the indicator changes equals pK of the indicator. Oh, there's more than enough information there. This is just a bit of background theory which allows us to understand a bit more about the indicators. Using table 116 of the data booklet, identify the most appropriate indicator for the titration of ethanoic acid with potassium hydroxide. Well, what we're looking for here is we, we need to recognise that the pH is going to be a greater than 7 at the equivalence point. pH is greater than 7 at the equivalence point. So we need an, indica so we need an indicator that uh, changes between 7 and, 7 and 10 and the ideal choice here phenol phenolthalein is the indicator of choice. Explain using an equation whether a solution of 0.1 mol per liter iron chloride would be acidic, alkaline or neutral. 
Well, in this particular case, we're talking about hydrolysis of the iron hexaqua iron in solution. This is a complex iron with a triple three plus charge. And in solution, the high charge density of the iron three plus draws electron density away from the HO bonds in the water molecules. And this gives rise to an equilibrium. This gives rise to an equilibrium between this and and this with a two plus charge as it releases hydrogen ions. So this shows that the iron three plus species releases hydrogen ions into solution making it acidic. Now I haven't actually explained this, I've just put the equation down. We could say verbally the high charge density the high charge density of the iron three iron polarizes the O H bonds of of the water molecules. Which are ligand ligand to the to the iron and weakens weakens the weakens them, allowing hydrogen ions to be to be released released in solution. Okay, so we've got our two marks there. We have the explanation, we've used the uh, equation, and we've said that it's acidic. The final part of the question is another pH determination. This time we're adding hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide directly. So we need to know which is the limiting reagent. So we work out the moles of each. The moles of the moles of hydrochloric acid, HCl, equals molarity times volume. So molarity is 0 0.1, no, sorry, 0 .0 0 0.5. The volume is 0 0.1, and that gives us number of moles, 0 0.05 moles. Move. Moles of sodium hydroxide, again, MV. Molarity 0 0.1, volume 0 0.2, 0 0.02 moles. So we should be able to see that there's a excess moles of hydrochloric acid. It's a one-to-one -one reaction. Better make a note of this: one-to-one -one reaction. Therefore, all all of the sodium hydroxide neutralizes 0 0.02 moles of acid so excess acid equals 0 0.05 minus 0 0.02 equals 0 0.03 moles total volume equals what are we adding 200 is being added to 100, 300 mil, which is equal to 0 0.3 litres. So the molarity of the acid, concentration of the acid, moles over volume, 0 0.03, divided by 0 0.3, and that of course comes to 0 
which is moles per litre. pH then e pH equals minus log hydrogen concentration which is minus log 0 0.1 which is equal to 1 pH equals 1. That's the end of this calculation.